Good morning everyone. My name is Mary George. I come from the University of Malaya and from the Faculty of Law at the Institute of Ocean and Earth Sciences. <coughs> now, uh, at the outset, uh, I would like to thank the Association of Pacific Rim Universities and in particular uh, Dr. Jeremy Piggott for having considered my paper worthy of discussion this, uh, this morning at this very August symposium. I chose this topic on Mark Hall, uh, Annex 6, Regulations for the Prevention of Air Pollution from Ships, because this treaty entered into force in 2005, and a Chapter 4 of this Annex just entered into force in January this year, so I thought it was very current. Furthermore, Chapter 4 of this Annex is a work in progress in some parts at the International Maritime Organization. Having listened to the uh, presentations yesterday, I'm really not puzzled as to why Indonesia acceded to this uh, international convention because it is bent on reducing greenhouse gas emissions by 26% by 2020 and a further 15% where possible. <laughs> However, the maritime uh, transportation sector's contribution to air pollution was not highlighted and consequently its impact on the coral triangle uh, for shipping is also not highlighted. Uh, this is uh, quite surprising to me because Indonesia is an archipelagic state and it has nine parts water to one part land. It is a concession given to Indonesia for being a member of the 1982 Policy Convention. Therefore, large ocean spaces that fall in, within Indonesian archipelagic baselines are called archipelagic waters and uh, this is something that Indonesia has sovereignty over. So therefore what we have in this presentation this morning is heavy law but no facts. But if I look at Indonesia's experience that also exceeded to Mahpol and X6, I can see the reason perhaps why Indonesia ex exceeded to this convention. If you look at Malaysia, uh, what Malaysia has is the fifth largest fleet of LNG carriers in the world. And to export this cargo through these ships to Europe and the USA, there is no way for Malaysia to move to these countries but for uh, exceeding to this convention, to an exceeds. Hence the title. Sorry, Mary, something is not sure. Uh, I didn't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, anyway, this is just with my first first slide only. I haven't gone to the heart of the matter yet. This is just uh, a lot of explanation. Uh, for okay, sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, because Malaysia acceded to mark on NX6 for this particular reason of international trade, because our ships can't get into European waters or US waters, Without complying with these regulations, I presume Indonesia did the same. Because when I checked the websites for a number of shipping companies, uh, Indonesia websites also, the shipping company website also said that they are not on NX6 compliant. So I figure this is the main reason. Now, in 2007, the International Maritime Organization conducted a study on the uh, amount of carbon dioxide released by international shipping. And it was found that international shipping contributed 2.7% of the global emissions of carbon dioxide. <coughs> However, this study is also being updated uh, currently because the developing countries at the IMO were not quite convinced that this was the accurate figure because it says that it didn't take into account the global recession at the time. Now, before I go further into my paper, let me put in a word on Mahal. Mahal is an international treaty. And after the Torrey Canyon disaster of Shetlands in the UK in 1969, this was the first proactive treaty that the IMO, the International Maritime Organization, adopted. Now, as mentioned in the abstract, Mahal 73-78 is an abbreviation for the treaty called International Convention for the Prevention of Pollution from Ships. Marco has been amended by the Protocols of 78 and 1997 and several other amendments. It is almost, it has almost universal coverage 
and because it is subscribed to 99% of world merchant tonnage. It has six annexes altogether uh, dealing with technical contact, of which the first two annexes, that is pollution by oil and pollution by ships, are compulsory and they have to be accepted by all nations. However, Annex 6 is optional and it covers air, the prevention of air pollution from, from ships. Annex 6 in turn has four chapters. And the first three of these chapters entered into force in 2005 and the last chapter in January 2013. Now, Annex 6 works through a series of technical and operational measures on ships. And much of the enforcement is through what we call a pollution certificate endorsement. The state to which the ship belongs will issue a certificate called the International Oil Pollution or Adversary Pollution Prevention Certificate, and that is what is enforced. Enforcement is through that certificate. Indonesia has been a member of the ILO since 1961. Now, for my paper, I had to rely on the arguments raised by WWF and the IPCC on the Power Tribal. They paint a very brief picture of the state of the Power Tribal living environment, giving rise to the argument that perhaps Marpol NX6 is relevant for the sustainable development of the area. And the ratification and implementation of Marpol NX6 regulations require an archipelagic state such as Indonesia to enforce certain regulations that arise from Annex 6. And these are focused on the emissions of uh, oxides of sulfur, nitrogen, volatile organic uh, compounds, and particulate matter regulations from ships in various maritime zones in Indonesia. Now the state may propose sulfur and nitrogen emission control areas, and these are tiny with sulfur uh, emission control areas from land. So land and sea interaction is connected in Marfall NX6. Now, based on this argument, I have a certain uh, uh, table of contents in this paper, and I, and I will read in these areas. One, the introduction to the state of the power tribal marine environment by WWF and IPCC. Second, the local sources of marine pollution and global sources of Pollution on the part of Triangle. Then an, an international treaty called the 1982 Law of Sea Convention on Marine Pollution Governance and Climate Change. Four, the ILO's governance of global atmospheric pollution, in particular Marpol NX6. Then special areas and sulfur nitrogen emission control areas. Then the sixth part focuses on what we call the Energy Efficiency Design Index of Ships and the shipboard emergency uh, regulations also to be put in ships. Then comes TSS or traffic separation schemes in the Coral Triangle, then followed by PSSA or particularly sensitive sea areas in the Coral Triangle. Number nine focuses on response action plans for hazardous cargo in the Coral Triangle. The way forward focusing on marine research and some conclusions. <coughs> now, the uh, Congo Triangle is said to suffer from uh, um, certain local actions and also from global atmospheric pollution. And the IPCC and the WWF have uh, said that some policy options need to be undertaken in this context. And one of them is to create a binding international agreement to reduce the rate and extent of climate change. And the other is to establish governance and structures for the Coral Triangle. Now, moving on to the framework convention for marine pollution, that is the 1982 Law of the Sea Convention, which is the mother, mother constitution for the oceans, under which MAPA also uh, acts. We find that there are several uh, articles in this convention which, need, which talk about marine pollution. And what is strange is that the archipelagic state is referred to in Article 54. And for marine pollution control within archipelagic waters, it cross refers to a regime on straits used for international navigation, such as the Straits of Malacca and Singapore. And throughout this article, uh, 
uh, in Article 54 and a few others, they say that you have to mutatis mutatis apply the provisions on strains to archipelagic waters. So what I have done in this section of my paper is look at all the provisions in the regime of strains and mutatis mutatis apply it to archipelagic waters. For those of us who are not familiar with mutatis mutatis, what it means is Wherever you find the term straits used for international navigation, change it to archipelagic waters. That's all that it means. And wherever it uh, refers to the straits, you apply archipelagic waters. So that's so what is significant here is the port state under Article 218. The port state uh, jurisdiction in the law of the sea convention is very wide. And it covers even a pollution, any pollution incident or event that a ship may have engaged in on the high seas. So a ship that has polluted the high seas, when it comes into the port state jurisdiction of the state, under the law of the sea convention, that port state can take action. However, this is not the case with Marpol. In Marpol, only states parties to Marpol can exercise port state jurisdiction and that too only with regard to the ship in how it uh, engaged in marine pollution with regard to those waters of which uh, the states are members of, only those waters. So this is one major difference. But we need to work the Marpol and X6 together with the law of the sea convention. At the moment there is a slight dichotomy between the two conventions. Now, Indonesia acceded to the Marpol Convention on 24th August 2012 and it entered into force for Indonesia on 24th November. For Malaysia, 27th September 2010 and it entered into force on 27th uh, December. I just put Singapore there because in my proposal later I'll be looking at Malaysia, Singapore and Indonesia as to see how we can work together for the Straits of Malacca but not for the Power Triangle because Singapore is not a party to the Power Triangle. Now, Marpol Annex 6 is very special because it provides for what is called the Oxides of Sulfur or SOX emission control areas. And these areas uh, in the ocean are to be tied in with the efforts that have been taken for land. Land measures and sea measures have to be tied in together. And they are generally called SECAS, S E C A, the Sulfur Emission Control Area. So the impact for SOX for terrestrial and marine parts must be considered as a whole, must be considered together. Vessels of the NX6. So vessels on the NX6 are obliged to use fuel with the sulfur content below 4.5% uh, mass per mass globally. And in a sector, they're supposed to use uh, fuel without much sulfur that is at at 1.5% mass per mass. Now, the rest of the presentation focuses on uh, what SECA is, how, how, how do we get SECA uh, demarcation within IMO, what must be done. We have to describe several areas, the general and meteorological conditions, the amount of uh, air pollution, etc. So this would be something that one would have to do to get a second area proposed for the Coral Triangle if you are interested in that direction. Now the other important uh, point in uh, uh, Marpol Annex 6 is this new chapter, chapter 4, which says that we must have new engines on our ships, uh, brand new engines that will help us to control atmospheric air pollution. Uh, this uh, has been uh, greatly resisted at the International Maritime Organization between developing and United countries. And developing countries are not in favor of incurring such heavy costs, but they seem, uh, IMO seems to have come up with a technology transfer resolution between developed and developing countries and they say, no, we will help you with the technology transfer. However, this is an ongoing work at the IMO. The other thing we could do is to propose traffic separation schemes within the power triangle because uh, the WWF and IPCC say that there's a lot of unregulated shipping going on in the power triangle. So perhaps this is something we could look at. Then comes another uh, concept for particularly sensitive sea areas. This is also somewhat akin to SECA, 
but uh, it doesn't come within the purview of NX6. It is a setup that comes within the purview of NX6. <coughs> Another point I would like to say is on the pollution preparedness in the power triangle. I don't see any response uh, measures under the oil pollution or the hazardous and noxious substances convention. There's no oil pollution or chemical pollution preparedness in the power triangle. So I think we need to go uh, forward by looking into some research uh, for the power triangle as far as international shipping is concerned. And uh, my conclusion is that not only chapter uh, annex 6 of our power, but we need to have traffic separation schemes, we need to have uh, oil pollution and chemical pollution response actions, etc. Thank you.